in. Suzanne, are you there? Hello. Yes, hi. How are you? Hi, how are you doing? Thanks for having me on. Good. And, uh, you know, again, we're, we're switched topic a little bit because uh, uh, last night uh, the Board of County Commissioners obviously passed uh, passed uh, English, English as only. the official, okay. no, not English only, English as the official language mm, okay. uh, in the common language. Uh, those that the, 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 the those against always try to say English only. It's not saying English only. It's that's doing a, what 31 other states have done. That's what we call it, a uh, state. I know, I know. Uh, Suzanne, how you doing? This is Suzanne Bibby. She's with uh, Pro English, correct? Yes, proenglish.org. And talk, talking about, now 31, 31 states have adopted this, correct? Yes, 31 states. The last state to do so was Oklahoma in 2010. They uh, passed some legislation um, that, that legislative year, and they put a question on the ballot, and 76% of Oklahomans voted to, make, to amend the Constitution and make English their official language. Now, what, California also did this. Mm -hmm. They did. They did it in 1986. So California has been an official English state for, for many, many years. Go figure, uh, huh? Yeah. Right. They don't enforce it, of course. They're well, of course not. They couldn't. Not enforcing <laughs> it, but, they, but they do have the law, and it's, it's been in place since, since the 80s. Who was, who was the governor then? Massachusetts, another state. Yeah, Massachusetts that's, that's not also has it. Mm -hmm. There are um, only 19 states remaining that don't have official English. Lots of states, um, there's you know, pending legislation in their legislatures now, you know, um, sometimes becomes very controversial, of course. It, it'll pass one chamber and then it dies in the other. Why do you um, think it becomes so controversial? I mean, I told a, a reporter today, I said, if you walked up and down any street in the United States of America and stopped someone and say, what's the official language? What's the common language used around here? Everyone, they would say you English. Say, say English. Right. So uh, that's what I, I don't understand why it's mountain. All I can hill. tell you, Blaine, is when this was before the state, uh -huh. when I was still in office, and I told you, Delegate Pete Callis from Washington County was, if not the lead sponsor, he was one of the lead co-sponsors. The vitriol that came out of people's mouths on the House floor, personally attacking him for being anti everything, and and uh, Pete Callis is Greek. Yeah, uh, it, it, it was just it was ugly. It was vulgar. Uh, it was. I mean, it, it completely broke Pete. Really? That's how it just bought the, the ugliness out of every the people who were opposed. Huh. That's what? right. I, I think you just hit the nail on the head, and I think this was very much on display last night. Um, you know, the majority of the people who were in the room um, were very vocal. That it's really a minority of the people who are opposed to official English, uh, but they're very loud and and they don't relent. And um, you know, it's really a silent majority that's in favor of official English. Poll after poll um, shows that close to 90 percent of Americans, doesn't matter what party, um, you know, affiliation um, or you know political ideology, they overwhelmingly support making English, English the official language of all levels, you know, the local, state, and federal level. But there is this very uh, determined, um, loud minority um, that sometimes does, they're successful in intimidating a lot of the lawmakers, and it, it makes them back off. Because, because um, at least in the state, and I can only speak from my experience at, at some point in time, is this fact that, I mean, it became personal. It, it was ugly. Yeah, it really does. It gets very ugly. It does get personal. And, um, you know, nobody wants to be called a racist, but that's usually the first thing. Um, you know, they go right for, right for the, the personal attacks, the name calling. It always starts at that level. There's never really a lot of debate on the substance because they really can't debate the substance. They can't debate the issue. Um, so they really have to make it about, you know, discrediting, uh, you know, the official English movement or anybody who supports it. Um, they try to, you know, smear you basically and say, well, don't listen to them. They're just, they're just, you know, racist and xenophobes, which really is not the case, of course. But um, that's really their only mode of attack. But it, unfortunately, they're successful in, in uh, making people back off sometimes. All right. Uh, um, so so uh, there's apparently also, I guess, on a bill on the federal level also? There is. Uh, there, there's actually two. Um, there's one that's the most popular is introduced by Representative Steve King of Iowa. It's H.R. 997. Uh, it currently has 109 co-sponsors in the House. Um, and Senator Inhofe from Oklahoma has the counterpart in the Senate. And um, we're really pushing hard this year to bring it to a committee hearing and hopefully a vote to push it to the the house floor because you know this comes up every congress it always has 
um, well over 100 co-sponsors every time. It's um, really a popular issue, uh, but sometimes the leadership isn't always wanting to move it, again, for the same reasons we just talked about. Um, they see it as controversial, and they lots of times lump it in with the immigration issue when really it's a standalone issue. Um, you know, 92% of the world nations have an official language. Um, the United States is one of the few that does not. So it's really well, something we need and, to... And why would you think it wouldn't be anything but English, for heaven's sakes? Right. Well, there's, of course, the argument, um, you know, that there's been an increase in the number of Spanish speakers in the United States and, um, you know, that that should somehow be given, you know, a lot of people try to say that we should, you know, go the route of um, Canada and become a bilingual country, officially bilingual, which, you know, and if well, you look uh, to Canada... And you can't you compare that. You can't compare right. Canada to that. Canada is bilingual for completely different reasons. Right, right. But they <laughs> have to, you know, draw these parallels that, you know, that's the solution. But, Really, a common language is one of the greatest unifiers. Um, you know, we are a multi-ethnic nation, and it's one of the best tools we have to, to bring everybody together to make sure we can all communicate. Um, so, so hopefully this year we can get some momentum in the House, especially, because if, it, if, they, if the leadership decided to bring this up in the U.S. Congress, uh, we know, at least in the House, it would pass overwhelmingly, and it would be a bipartisan vote. There are a number of Democrats who are on the bill as well. Um, Democrats and Republicans alike support this issue, so what we're you, hoping for something good this year. What do you say to those that say, this is meaningless, it's a waste of time, time shouldn't be spending, spent on it, it's meaningless and worthless? Because there are those that take that tact. Right. I, I noticed a lot of people had, um, were saying that last night, and I just kept thinking to myself, you know, if it's so meaningless, why do you oppose it so much? Yeah, why and did you take your time to come if it's so meaningless? Well, one of the exactly. comments I made to someone and said, well, you know, one point the state of Maryland felt it was important enough to put through the legislature making the official drink milk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, we got a lot of those. They made the official bird, the black-eyed oh, we, Susie, the we official got dog, the Chesapeake Bay Retriever, the yep. official right. bird, the Baltimore Orioles. We All that went through tons. the legislature Absolutely. and were bills. Absolutely. Right. Exactly. And, um, you know, this one, it really does have some meaning to it because unlike some other, you know, states or counties where they pass very simple laws that literally, I mean, California is one of them. They just have one, a one-liner that says English is the official language. And, the, you know, compared to the ordinance that was passed last night, um, this one's very strong. It actually defines what official English means. Um, it specifically defines that it's only limited to official communications, meaning government communications. Um, and it really has some enforcement provisions. It gives it some teeth. So um, I think that's what they're afraid of. Um, I don't know why they would be afraid of it. Um, because there's really no downside to immigrants learning English. We want to make sure that there are incentives there for them to learn it. There was a woman last night who talked about, she was in opposition to the bill, but she talked about, uh, you know, her time in Canada and living in Quebec. And um, there were so few English speakers there that she was forced to learn French. And she was so grateful that she was forced to learn it, and now she can speak it fluently. And um, I thought, wow, she just made our, our case for us. Because she did. If, if you restore the incentives, to learn the language, people are going to do it. They want to learn English. It's when people are being dishonest with new immigrants, telling them, don't worry about it, you don't need to learn English, all you need to do is demand everything in your native language, that hurts them, that, that only harms them. They will make less money, um, you know, they won't be able to, you know, defend themselves in the workplace, of course, if they can't, they have limited English skills. Um, so it's really a, a good thing that, um, you know, the county, Frederick County, passed this last night. I think it'll set a good precedent. Well, if I moved to another country that spoke spoke French or whatever, I'd have to learn it. Right. If I was going to communicate. Right. Well, hello. Yeah. <laughs> well, and one of the claims that are thrown out there is that uh, health, safety, and welfare of citizens will be jeopardized. That's just bull. That doesn't make any sense. You scream That's fire. Right. They're going to figure it out, don't you think? Well, That's um, right. And I mean, um, actually, there's a, a, a relevant um, story that came out a couple of weeks ago in uh, the neighboring county, Montgomery County, and they have had about a 40% increase in non-English speakers um, over the past six years. And a story came out a couple days later after this announcement about the spike um, in non-English speakers that Hispanics are making up about 50% of the traffic fatalities in the county. Well, why is that? Because all road signs in the, in, in the county, of course, in the United States, are in English. Is this? It's endangering them. This is a. This is a safety issue in many cases. So 
um, any groups that are out there trying to dissuade immigrants from learning English is really to their detriment. And um, Well, I'm they're going to be telling you next that you're going to have to do signs in Spanish and then French and everything else because uh, Montgomery County is a minority, majority county. Yep. Majority, minority county. Yep. Right. Well, it's things like this that can set a good precedent.